So, part two. Now let's explain the air brake test itself. And let's break it down why we do what we do. So now that you understand how it works, now we have to test it to make sure it does work. Okay. First thing we do is we're going to start the engine right. And then we're going to do what? Build to 120. When we're building to 120, what part, what are we testing? Uh, tank, the government. We're, no. As it's building up, we're testing to make sure the air compressor is working, right? Because right? right, right. if it doesn't build up, that means your air compressor is bad. Right. That's the first thing we test. Next, once we re reach 120, right? 120 to 140. What should we hear? A sneeze. A sneeze. And what should the governor do? Shut up. So what are we testing now? Governor. The governor. Make sure that the governor's working. So at 120, we make sure that the governor's working. Okay. Now, how do we know that the governor's not working? It won't build air pressure or it won't shut off. It won't shut off. So what, how would we know if it won't shut off? Uh, won't hear its no. Too much air pressure. So, knowing you guys being, say you guys were designers of this system, you guys know that it is possible that a governor can go bad, yes? Would you want the air compressor to constantly keep pumping air until the air tank blew up? No. no. That's why you hear this sneeze, right? What is the sneeze for? To release, the air. to release the air. So once it gets to a certain pressure, it just releases the air. So is the air pressure ever on your air gauge ever going to go higher than 120 to 140? No. no. So how do you know if the air compressor, or if the governor is not working? If you constantly hear the air. sneeze. So if every 10 seconds you hear another sneeze, that means that what never shut off? Compressor, which means what's not working? Governor. Governor. So that's the second thing that we test, right? First, building up, air compressor. Next, sneeze, governor. Now, what do we do? We're going to shut the... Truck off. Shut the truck off. Why do we do that? So that the compressor won't be running. So the compressor won't be running. Now, let me, guys, let me ask you this. If I give you guys a deflated balloon, What's the only way you guys can see if there's a hole if you put if there's a hole in there? Put air in it. That's how I want you guys to think about this chamber. So over here we have two separate balloons that are deflated that have no air in them, right? If have you guys ever been? Have you guys have seen the fun houses or those bouncy houses, right? How do they stay inflated? What's constantly blowing? A fan, right? Some something constantly blowing air into there. Is the air always escaping? Yeah. As soon as you unplug the fan, what happens? You see all the holes, and they all start, are still going down. But even though there's a whole bunch of holes in there, as long as the fan's going on, it's still going to stay rising. Same thing happens if we keep the air compressor on. So if there's holes or leaks inside the air brake system, the air compressor is going to cover them up because we won't see them on the gauge, because the gauge will never drop. Does that make sense? So that's why you actually have to shut the truck off to make sure the air compressor's off, so and then we can make sure everything is getting tested properly. So when there's no air in the compressor, the needle drops, correct? No. Ask that question again. How will we know when um, the air compression is not working? If the air pressure never drops, if the air, air pressure never increases. Oh, if it never increases. The only job of the air, pre air compressor is to do what? That's it. So if you're giving a gas, giving a gas, but it never goes up, you have a bad air compressor. Right. Okay. So um, what we're going to do now, we're going to put in first gear, right? Or we're going to check the wheels if it's an automatic truck, so make sure it's not going to roll. Because now we have to push in those two parking brakes. So we're going to push in the, the octagon and the yellow diamond. Okay. Yellow first, red second. We're going to push them in one at a time. What's going to happen? Air is going to leave the tanks and it's going to go into all the brake chambers. Which brake chambers are going to go into? The service or the emergency? The emergency side. Okay, so you're going to push in both brakes, and because this has to do with the emergency side, it's going to fill this empty balloon with air. Yes? So, now the, now the fact air is leaving the tank, going into your chamber, are we going to lose air pressure here? Yes. Yes, because it, this only reads the tank. So usually you'll, you'll stop around 100 to 90 PSI. So you'll lose uh, a good amount of pressure, but it's going into the system. At this point, we're going to do what? 
No? You're going to wait one minute. Can't lose more than? 3 PSI in a class A or 2 PSI in a class B. Okay. What are we doing then? We're seeing if there's any holes in this balloon. Make sense? Because if there is a hole in a balloon, in that one minute, what are we going to do? It's going to start dropping. But if it doesn't drop more than three in a class A or two in a class B, that means you're okay. There's always going to be some kind of leaking, but as long as it's not major. Understood? Next, what do we do? We press on the foot brake. What's that going to fill up? Service. Service balloon, right? So now this is empty. Air is in here. We test it to make sure that this has no leaks. Now I have to make sure that this part has no leaks. So you're going to press on the service brake. It's going to fill this up. We're going to wait one minute after it stabilizes. Again, it's going to drop. It might go to 80 or so, 80, 85. Okay. And you're going to hold that down for one minute, and you can't lose more than 4 PSI. And in the class B, 3 PSI. For your written test, you guys have to know both. For your road test, there's only the class A or the torque that you're going for. Okay? Um, so that makes sure that we don't have any leaks on this system. So what do we do? So far we've checked the air compressor, we checked the governor, we checked the air tank. Now we're checking the both leaks, make sure that there's no leaks in any of the system. Next thing, what are we going to do? We're going to pump on the brake. What's that going to do to the air pressure? Drop it. At 60 psi, what should happen? Pressure. Warning light and pressure should go on. If it doesn't, that, that means it's not working correctly, right? And then if, what are we going to continue to do? We're going to keep pumping until we hit to 40 to 20. And what should happen? Wheel should lock and these parking brakes should pop up automatically. Okay? And that will show you that the springs are working correctly. That none of your springs are broken and everything's working okay. Because imagine being in an emergency and not being able to stop. Having no air, not being able to stop at the same time, no good. Because even if you try to hit the brakes, you got no air to put inside the chamber, so you can't stop. Make sense? Okay. And that's pretty much why we do the air brake test. How often should we do the air brake test? Every day. Now, how many people actually do an air brake test every day? Maybe once you get your license, about 90% to 95% don't do an air brake test every day. Yes. They taking chances like that? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Is so it only on pre trip, not post trip? Or if you test the air brake, it's supposed to be just pre trip? Yeah, pre trip is good enough. Because as you're going through the road, you kind of, you'll, you'll see, if you're paying attention to your gauge, you'll see if there's a major leak that happens as you're going through. Mm -hmm. Um, but let's kind of put it all together in a story for you so it all sticks. Say uh, you're going to work, now you have your CDL, you have uh, your job already, you got into a fight with your significant other, uh, she's nagging you over something, and then you really messed up. You're not, you're not thinking straight. So you don't do the pre-trip, you say, F it, I'm already late, she made me late, I'm coming into work. So you get into the truck, you start her up, and you go. You put the music on loud because you're a little depressed, so you're trying to relax. Now, you didn't do an air brake test, so you don't know if any of this stuff is working. So, you come to find out that you have an air leak, but you don't know, you're not paying attention, you're just looking at the traffic and you're listening to music and your head is occupied. So now you're coming down Route 109, 2 o'clock, rush hour traffic, whatever it is, right? And then you're pressing on the brake because there's a lot of stops and go, stop and go, right? Now what's going to happen? Air pressure is going to lose. Say you have a leak, you're going to press on the brake a lot, so you're going to lose even faster. You're getting a 60 PSI, what should happen? One light and buzzer should come on, but it doesn't because it's not working and you never found out because you didn't do the test. So now you're in Elizabeth, New Jersey, in the middle lane, and you keep pumping on the brake until you get to 40 to 20. What's going to happen automatically? Clocks. So now you're stuck in the middle lane on Route 109 during rush hour in Elizabeth, New Jersey. You're going to make a whole lot of friends that way. <laughs> All right. So, moral of the story? Do your break test. Don't argue with your significant other.